For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot. Snip out the Madden Cheese as always. Got another defense video for you guys today. Today I'm be going over a blitz and a base defense, a really good pass defense that I've been using online and having a lot of success with. This is something that you can use out of multiple different coverages. It's just a concept that you can use. You can pretty much use this probably in any uh, nickel package defense that you want. I'm going to use it out of a very specific package. I'm going to be using it out of the Big Nickel Over G, uh, which is another series of plays out of my Dolphins uh, ebook slash Giants ebook. This is the exact same defense, essentially. Uh, if you guys want to see more defensive plays, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. But the play today that I'm going to be going over there's really two it's two different plays but like i said it's the exact same concept you can use this uh whether you like to run cover two which i think to me cover two is probably the better defense right now or cover three which it also has the exact same thing with the ss blitz three so let's just go ahead and let's put these on our audibles like we always do now when it comes to the audibles i have more plays in this formation and in this series that i'm going to show you today than you actually have choices for audibles you only get four audibles i'm going to show about six or seven plays uh but they're pretty much the same plays like when it comes to the weak safety blitzes you can really choose between any of the three weak safety blitz plays as long as you like that coverage the most. I personally like the cover two the most, but I would say having the cover two and the cover three in your audibles is pretty good. Uh, when it comes to the cornerback or the slot cornerback blitz versions that I'm going to go over later in the video, it's the same thing. You have cover two and cover three, so it's really up to you. I would say have a nice blend between the two because the point of this video is sometimes you'll have blitzes coming off of one side, sometimes you'll have it coming off the other, which will be very hard for your opponent to diagnose. But always at the end of the day, make sure that you do have the cover for corner because this is going to be your best run defense. I'll go over this as well. So always make sure that your cuff for quarters is in your audibles because that's also very important. On the offensive side, uh, we could go with any number of things, but I'm going to go against the bunch because ultimately this is going to be one of the best defenses against people that like to run a lot of bunch coverages. And bunch coverages is pretty much meta. So whether they're running gun bunch, gun bunch TE, whatever, any bunch formation or any type formation rather, which is pretty much the best formations, this is going to be best against. Now, as always, this video is brought to my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get your mutt team up, I know the new promo just dropped. The new uh, Halloween promo just came out, Most Feared. If you want to get your mutt team up and you want to support the channel at the same time, check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code MONEY to get 3% off. It's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market. So like I said, I'm rocking the cover two here because I personally think cover two is one of the better defenses right now. Uh, and I'm not the only person I've heard say that. So cover two is one of the best ones. I find that the cover three version might be slightly better as far as coverage because this does have the seam flats. If you guys don't know, curl flats don't cover as good as seam flat so both of these plays are very are really good but it's the same setup it doesn't even matter which defense you use now me personally i'm not a huge fan of the soft squats if i were to make a coverage adjustment i would go over the top with the cloud flats personally i think the cloud flats are really good but that's neither here nor there so the setup for the blitz because that's probably the most important part number one you always want to make sure this blitzer number one you got to put your fastest guy in there i didn't do that uh but rose fine he's a decent uh blitzing option he's a fast safety he's got to be like a 90 speed guy if you have like a super fast guy like a 97 speed cornerback of some kind or something like that that's probably the best person to put in here but i'm just going to run it as is because this guy's also going to be very important when it comes to run defense and safeties are going to be very good when it comes to that so got my blitzing safety i don't want him to be so close if he's in too close he'll get picked up by the right tackle sometimes i want to move him out a little bit like i said this is a perfect type of coverage to hide that blitzer in because he looks like he's just right here in his, his zone you're not going to typically expect the blitz coming off uh like you might in some other formations where the receivers are out wide he's right in the bunch it looks like he's in there about to do his job Looks like he's about to drop into coverage. So that's pretty much the, the most important thing. Maybe move him out just a little bit, although where he's out is typically fine. Uh, the, the setup could be easier. All I'm going to do is pinch my defensive line, which is D-pad left and down. Basically, that brings them all in. And then after that, I have a couple options. I can either slant them left, which I find I have a lot of success with, or slant them outside. They both have success. Then I want to take the guy here that's basically going to be 
away from the action because that vert hook, his job is going to be jumping these lanes pretty quickly. So I'm going to take the guy that's over the running back because the running back will be my responsibility if he goes out into a flat typically. Um, it's also going to be my responsibility to cover middle, but that's pretty much the progression. I'm pretty much going to, um, you know, come down on this gap. The second the play starts, I'm going to try to just, just stay here for, you know, half a second and then drop back into coverage. If the running back goes out on the route, I got to drop back it towards his area, basically cover towards that area. That's pretty much it. And then the last thing would be the guess, the guess pass. That's the most important thing because when it comes to blitzes, guessing pass will always get you more pressure. So ultimately, this is the setup here. Like I said, I'm just going to come down this gap. Just gonna guess pass, hover here for a second, wait for that cornerback uh, or that guard to react to me, and then the cornerback will shoot in free. There, didn't quite get the reaction that I wanted, but you can see we eventually get a cover sack because we do have good coverage. So I didn't quite get the blitz that I wanted. Uh, we'll try to set that up again. Also like the baseline press and then baseline one more time. That's something that, like I said, not the most important step, but I like to do that. So we'll go ahead and do that one more time. We're gonna run that. We're gonna run that back. Like I said, maybe I had this this uh, this blitzing safety in a little bit too close. One of the things about this blitzing safety too that I really like, like I said, if it's a run play, it's gonna be an inside zone, which means the running backs gonna be coming right at that blitzing safety. So a lot of times that will stop a lot of run plays. So that's another reason you want to always make sure you run this the way that I'm running it now. So like I said, right here, we got that random play, and oh, he, got, he throws it up into it, it coverage, but I did see the cornerback came in free there. Real quick, we did get that blitzing uh, cornerback in free like I wanted, and you can see he basically just had to, to jump. I mean, that ball just gets out quick, even though I don't understand why, because he was definitely covered. So Mac Jones just threw it up into a crowd. Uh, but you can see, this is the desired effect here. We have this guard, basically blocking nobody. One of these guards, that's the, that's the plan every play, is to get one of these linemen blocking nobody. It looks like on the other side though, we got pressure off of that side too. So that's something you gotta keep in mind. We're basically going to be getting pressure in a lot of different areas. This came because I basically looped around uh, and you know the, the right tackle basically just switched off. We got two guys coming in free. To me, the best setup without a doubt is going to be um, pinching the defensive line and slanting to the left not necessarily slanting uh, out. I, I find this is the best setup here. Cause I'm, and I also find that you can also motion this, this guy over here just to try to pull all the linemen to this side as much as possible. This is probably the ideal setup. So we'll go and we'll do this a couple times. Uh, this is something where you know we should get pressure right off the edge. You can see right here the running back was blocking. He just got he just completely missed and uh, you know stones the quarterback, which is another reason. Why I was saying you always want to run this blitzer off of this side, off the opposite side of the running back. It, it's, it works to stop the run, and it works with the blitz because this guy here is on a straight pass block, but he cannot get around quick enough to stop this blitzing cornerback. That's why you always want to make sure that you're blitzing opposite the running back. It works in every situation. So you can see right here, this guy just comes right off the edge screaming. We got a five on six. Uh, as we only have five blitzers because I'm not a blitzer. I back out pretty quickly. But you can see we have a five with six blockers and the five wins. A really easy blitz to set up too. I mean, it's only really two steps. Um, although there is a third step. If this cornerback isn't down on the box, into the box enough, you got to move him down. You got to manually move him down. So all you really have to do, pinch your defensive line, slant them away from the blitzing cornerback, and then bring your user down here. Now I'm also going to do um, this hard flat uh, because I think that the computer's going to be thrown underneath quite a bit. Um, but this is, you know, this is pretty much it. So right here, you've got to take away those short throws. You can see he comes in again. That looked like the exact same play. Running back was blocking again. Did not matter. Let's go and let's watch the replay. Um, you can see, number one, I mean, you know, I got to recognize the running backs not on a pattern faster. That's that's one of the most important things because I got to get back to my zone to cover middle. And I got back there good enough that I probably could have lurked. But that's going to all come out in the gameplay. Basically, when you're playing, if your opponent's throwing to the running back a lot, you're going to have to watch the running back. If they're not throwing to the running back a lot, you're basically just going to have to drop back into coverage a little bit quicker than I am. Uh, but like I said, I'm playing the computer. I have no idea what they want to do. But that's something that's going to be easier to, to predict when you're actually playing a live opponent. But ultimately, same result, five or six-man blocking. Uh, we'll go back to our blitzer here. You can see he just comes in off the edge free. Running back doesn't even have a shot. You know what I mean? Bottom line, if you have a fast enough guy running this, running back will not get in the way of any of these blitzes. So we'll go ahead and we'll switch it up to the SS Blitz 3 because there are a few variational adjustments that you can make here. Number one, I prefer to keep the three rec. I think the three rec is good. Um, like I said, the seam flats are better. The seam flats are better than the curl flats. That's one of the things I like about this particular defense. At least it doesn't have curl flats. You can go and you can have curl flats if you uh, play over the top. 
but that's not what I want to do. I want the seam flats. The seam flats follow much better. I did a video about this a long time ago. Seam flats are the way to go. Now, when it comes to a, uh, a defense, an offense like this, you got to move your safety over because you'll get cover three one play touchdown bombs all over you in a bunch if you don't move the safety over. So that will add to what you have to do. But other than that, the only real setup difference is you really have your choice what you want to do, if, whether you want to take away one of the seam flats to user, or if you want to uh, use the three rack hook. Now, against a bunch like this, it's going to be best to to basically, in my opinion, I mostly do this with the seam flat. But you can go with the three rack. The three rack's best because in this bunch scenario, he's going to follow any drags or any crossers better. Um, so I'm going to leave him there, and I'm typically going to use her the seam flat. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only difference. Like I said, I'm having more success coming outside here and slanting away. So I'm going to continue to do that, uh, and then we're just going to basically just run it like this. So we'll go ahead and we'll let, like I said, right here. we got that running back. Got to take that away. we got pressure from the other side, though. You can see multiple guys were coming in on that particular play. So we really didn't get a lot of run plays there, but we're going to finish this video with the best run defense, and that's the cover four quarters. So we're going to pick that. On the offensive side, I guess the only run play we have in this is going to be the halfback base. So we'll go with the halfback base. So the setup's going to be pretty similar. We're just going to pinch that defensive line. Then we're going to base the line, show blitz, base the line. The idea behind that is to get these safeties down into a position where they can basically uh, affect the run. Because if you don't, you don't guess pass. This is your run defense in this formation. You're not going to guess pass here. If you don't guess pass, and I'm not going to shoot the gap, even though I know where the play is going. No. Nope. Uh, you can see, I mean, number one, they did shoot the gap for me because we get a loss. But uh, without a doubt, I mean, this is going to be one of the best run defenses in the uh, in the formation. Probably, to me, the best run defense in the formation. So here we go once again. Okay, so I kind of want to keep this guy down on the line, uh, but this is pretty much it. You don't really have to do anything else. Just pinch the defensive line, uh, baseline, show blitz, baseline, and your safety is just don't guess pass, and your safety is going to do a very good job of filling the lanes. Uh, so I'm just going to sit back and watch the defense nope. you know, go to work. So you see nothing there. There's no uh, lanes to run on. Now, in my opinion, the best play without a doubt is the weak safety blitz three. This is going to be the one that I use the most. So we'll go and pick the cover three. On the offensive side, we're just going to go with random gun. So the thing that I like about this defense, and you just saw it, that's the weak safety blitzer is coming down to the box all by himself. So let's go ahead and let's put our pre-snap art up. Uh, the reason that I like that is because it really eliminates the step. On a previous play that I showed you guys, the cover three sky, you really had to do all that stuff yourself. You really had to bring these guys into position uh, and things like that, which, you know, it's just eliminates a step. It makes it quicker. It makes it harder for your opponent to basically just come out and, and snap the ball on you. There's really only two or three adjustments you have to make. The number one adjustment would be to basically click onto this, uh, this blitzing safety. I'll show you what happens if you don't. Uh, the second I start making adjustments, EA put some stupid thing in here where a lot of times he'll walk back or he'll do something, you know, he'll go back and then he'll come back down, which can mess up the whole play. But if you click on him and move him, he, he'll stay put. So click on him, move him, and then that's pretty much all you have to do. Then the only real adjustments you have to make is pinch the defensive line and then slant them outside, which is basically D-pad to the left and down, and D-pad to the left and up on the right stick. That's all you got to do. The last step is essentially just bring your user down over the middle and put him on a blitz. That's all you got to do. Uh, and this is going to be a really good blitz. It's also going to be a really good run-stopping defense. Like I said, you can basically set up the same way if you have time as the previous play. It'll make it a really good run defense because you can see there's no inside run lanes. There's no outside run lanes because we have outside containment. And then other than that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can put yourself on hard flats if you like because this pressure will come pretty quick. Uh, that's probably one of the best adjustments that you can make. Uh, but this is pretty much it. And then I'm just going to stay home for half a second and drop back. You always want this blitz coming off the opposite side of the running back because a lot of times the running back won't be able to rotate over if even if he is pass blocking so let's go and let's run this play a couple times like i said right there he was on the pattern you can see our guy just comes in and blows the quarterback up on what i think was a five on five or maybe even a five on six let's go to the replay i did not see how many people were blocking like i said i picked random gun here so basically he did look like he was in a check and release he stayed on for a second and then he goes out of the pattern so ultimately i pull the center and then you can see we have a five on five and this guy's just coming in hot off the edge free so obviously this guy here you're going to want to make sure you have your fastest guy i didn't make that adjustment i just have whoever's there typically I know Holland's a good pro. I don't know if he's really good in this game or not. I have no idea. But you can see he just comes off the edge untouched. Takes a really good angle because, like I said, I did move him down into the box a little bit pre-snap. You want to have him a little bit closer to the line. You can see he just comes straight up for the quarterback. I mean, that's going to be something you're going to get a lot of pressure on. This is a very good pressure package. You can run this out of multiple different coverages. And like I said, you can run this scheme pretty much all game. You can run uh, any one of these coverages. I'll run the cover two probably the second most because I do like 
cover two, although I did pick the wrong play. So let's go ahead and let's, I thought I hit Y, but here we go. We got our cover two look here. So like I said, when you make this adjustment though, you can see it kind of messes up uh, when it comes to these guys. Um, you know, basically it'll change up everything they're doing. The more adjustments you make, you see the safeties are shifting and all kind of stuff. That's one of the things I don't like about the cover two and about the cover ones. It can really um, have those effects on the coverage. But ultimately, if you get that adjustment in quick enough, you can still have a lot of success. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. This will be even easier because there's no running back in the backfield. We got an empty gun look here. So we're going to have a probably even quicker blitz. And you can see he's just right around that edge. Got it! You're getting some really good coverage. Because like I said, if you mix up your coverages, obviously you can confuse your opponent. And then you can make a lot of really good plays like this. Your opponent might be expecting that cover three. You hit him with a cover two. You hit him with a cover one. And boom, you're having a lot of success. Now, I know I said I don't really like cover one. But you got to admit, cover three, if you can see right here, cover three pre-snap, I'm going to make my little bit of an adjustment here. Uh, cover three and cover one look the most alike. So this is your best opportunity to fool your opponent, make them think you're running a different coverage entirely. And then you can do something like this. We basically just come down over the uh, the center with the guy covering the running back. This is a really good way to mix in a cover one man. Like I said, I'm not really a fan, but cover three and cover one man look the most similar pre-snap. The cover two is a little bit of a giveaway based on the fact that you go from a single high safety to two, to two high safeties. But this here, like I said, you can confuse your opponent. They can, they can look at this and think you're still in that cover through shell and then boom you're coming off the edge uh with a really good blitz uh just as long as you know like right there the running back goes down the pattern or follow him so you have the opportunity to run those together really well so without a doubt cover three and cover one work together the best but you can do uh the cover two blitz uh, here we also have an issue where this running back is on, the, is on the wrong side. So in this scenario like this, I'm better off just basically blitzing this guy here and then basically just switching this guy over to a, uh, a mid-read or, or a middle third or something like that. I mean, I have a cover two anyway. This is really going to be how I want to adjust this defense because ultimately um, I, don't, I don't think that this blitz is nearly as effective and you can't flip the play. Once this play is set up the way that it is, you can't flip the play. So put this guy in something else. It doesn't really matter. You want to man him to the running back or something, man him to the tight end, whatever. But put him in something else. Have your blitz always coming off the opposite side. If you're, if you're using it as a blitz, I mean, a lot of times you can use this as a run defense, and it's not really going to be important to do that. But if you're using this as a blitz, it always has to be the blitz coming off the opposite side of the running back for that to come home. Uh, and it's you know it's going to be the most important part. So we can switch, we can switch that up. We can't really flip the play. And then you can see, boom, we're getting a sack off the other side even with the guy coming up the wrong side. We'll pick that play again. We'll go with some random run plays because you can stop the run with this. So we're going to go concept run. Now I showed you guys this play in a previous um, in the previous defense where you can basically shoot gaps right over the center. We're going to make our exact same adjustments. Like I said, you got to move this guy first so he doesn't uh, he doesn't go anywhere. But pinch your defense or pinch your defensive line, slant outside. Uh, and now you're going to see, I mean, I could basically just shoot the gap right over the center here. Uh, this guy here, I, I want to move him down a little bit. And if I have my choice, I, I'd probably rather play hard flats as far as that goes. But ultimately, I can shoot the gap right over that center. Even on a play like this, which is basically a goal line. Nope. You can see right here, we can just basically just shoot right in and just make a play. The only real difference when it comes to uh, running this play as a run defense, if you're expecting run, uh, is you're pretty much going to want to stay back. Let me just do my setup real quick, which, like I said, it's a real quick setup. But in the previous play, I was saying come down here into the box because you're trying to pull a blocker. Here, you're trying to basically get forgotten. So I'm going to go out and set up my 4 4, and I'm going to basically stand back far enough so that, you know, they, I don't get blocked right away. I'm going to be the last one blocked. That's how I'm going to shoot my gaps, as you can see right there, as we, we, we you know, didn't make the tackle, but we still basically kept him from getting anywhere. So I'm going to go out and end the video there. If you guys want to see more defenses, I can do a full scheme. I think I put out two videos already uh this is the third video out of the big nickel over g so if you guys want to see a full breakdown uh, let me know in the comment section i could do like a five part defensive scheme uh out of this particular uh formation because it's one of the best in the game it's been one of the best all year it's been one of the best since it came out so hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see that other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below